This is your goofy Uncle Tree Jam, and I want to welcome you back to my Let's Play of Mass Effect 1. Last time we left off, we finally wrapped up at Rift Station, but we had a bit of a run-in with some Asari and Geth troopers, and we took care of them. But now we have snuck into the maintenance tunnel, and we are ready to confront Matriarch Benezia. Right off the bat, I'm going to make sure that my squad's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of this. And it looks like I'm set up the way I want. We're going to need to make sure that all of our squad members have some protection from biotic abilities and tech attacks, because those are going to figure in quite a bit. So, let's go ahead and confront Benezia. You do not know the privilege of being a mother. There is power in creation. To shape a life, turn it toward happiness or despair. Her children were to be ours. Raised to hunt and slay Saren's enemies. I won't be moved by sympathy, no matter who you bring into this confrontation. Liara's is here because she wants to be, not because I asked her to. Indeed. What have you told her about me, Liara? What could I say, Mother? That you're insane? Evil? Should I explain how to kill you? What could I say? Have you faced an Asari commando unit before? Few humans have. I can't believe you'd kill your own daughter. I now realize I should have been stricter with her. Oh, that's cold. So it looks like we're now in stasis and it looks like she's ready to get her commandos to swarm up on us and try and take us out. So as soon as this cutscene finishes, we got a break for it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and hit him with damping. And from right here, we are actually vulnerable to Benezi's attack, so we need to relocate ASAP. Okay, we're still in range, I think, of the Sorry Commandos, but Benezia cannot hit us, so that's the important part. Aw, oh, crap, Rex is down. Okay, Liara? Oh, that's not good. Okay, Rex, let's go ahead and get Rex up, let's get some, some immunity up. We are gonna get our barrier up, and I'm gonna go ahead and start shutting down weapons. Now we got Geth. And I think this is gonna be there are gonna be three waves of enemies. This is the second this is the second wave we've got right now. And this sorry kind is like right in front of me. Literally right in the party zone. Okay. Okay, we got our cells. Oh, we got some uh, containment cells. Oh my god, can't speak. Using your shotgun, so you know what? You gotta use a little bit of throw. Let's go ahead and throw her around. Yeah! Okay, we got some enemies that are probably hiding around somewhere, so... As long as we're back here, we should not be in range of Benezia's attacks, and that's a good thing. So... Let me go ahead and get this guy in the air. We are now at the final wave of enemies, and I think... Oh boy, okay, we need to take these guys. This is not good. Enemy contact. Okay, I'm gonna run back here. I don't want to get gunned down. run this way. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and with Sabotage, and let's go ahead and get Rex's immunity up, just in case. Whoops. Can I hit the railing there? Alright, that's right. You're going down. Yeah. Get some. Hmm. Am I vulnerable here? Nope. I'm good. Okay. 
it is not working out, so you know what? This is not over. Saren is unstoppable. My mind is filled with his light. Everything is clear. The Rachni didn't cooperate with you. Why should I? I will not betray him. You will. You... You must listen. Saren still whispers in my mind. I can fight his compulsions briefly, but the indoctrination is strong. Why are you able to break free of his control now? I sealed a part of my mind away from the indoctrination, saving it for a moment when I could help destroy him. It will not last long. So you could turn on me again? Yes, but it would not be my will, Shepard. People are not themselves around Saren. You come to idolize him, worship him. You would do anything for him. The key is Sovereign, his flagship. It is a dreadnought of incredible size, and its power is extraordinary. The ship that attacked Eden Prime? I didn't think anything that size could land on a planet. It has a very powerful Mass Effect drive, but that is not Sovereign's true power. The longer you stay aboard, the more Saren's will seems correct. You sit at his feet and smile as his words pour into you. It is subtle at first. I thought I was strong enough to resist. Instead, I became a willing tool, eager to serve. He sent me here to find the location of the Mu Relay. Its position was lost thousands of years ago. How does something that big go missing? 4,000 years ago, a star nearby went supernova. The shockwave propelled the relay out of its system, but did not damage it. Its precise vector and speed are impossible to determine. As millennia passed, the nebula created by the nova enveloped the relay. It is difficult to find any cold object in interstellar space, particularly something swathed in hot dust and radiation. Someone on Novaria found it? 2,000 years ago, the Rachni inhabited that region of our galaxy. They discovered the relay. The Rachni can share memories across generations. Queens inherit the knowledge of their mothers. I took the location of the relay from the Queen's mind. I was not gentle. Why does Saren need the new relay? He believes it will lead him to the conduit. I would tell you more if I could, but Saren did not share his counsel with me. I was merely a servant to his cause. How did the Rachni find it? They searched, patiently. They are territorial creatures, driven to close any possible way into their systems. You can still make it right. Give me the information. I was not myself, but I should have been stronger. I transcribed the data to an OSD. Take it, please. Knowing the Relay's coordinates is not enough. Do you know where he planned to go from there? Saren wouldn't tell me his destination. But you must find out quickly. I transmitted the coordinates to him before you arrived. You have to stop me. I, I can't. His teeth are at my ear. Fingers on my spine. You sh you should. Oh, you should. Mother, I don't leave. Fight him. You've always made me proud, Liara. Die. I smell trouble. Are you gonna do that? You're gonna be a nice mother one second, you're gonna be a cold blooded killer the next? Damn. That's some cold shit, you know what? Alright. Uh. I need to get Liara to change to a pistol, because she's not used for it. Why is she using a shotgun? I think it's automatic, actually. 
But anyway, we got a few more Asari Commandos to deal with. I think two on this side, one here, so let me go ahead and shut them down in sequence. And that did not work. There they go. Okay. Kind of see her right here. Let me see if I can get a beat on her and use some sabotage. And I think. Alright, let's go ahead and with damping. Okay, Botic should be down. Oh, this is not good. Oh, never mind. We got this. Got this in the bag. I cannot go on. You will have to stop him, Shepard. Hold on. We've got Metagel. Maybe we can... No. He is still in my mind. I am not entirely myself. I never will be again. Mother. Good night, little wing. I will see you again with the dawn. No light. They always said there would be a... <sighs> Damn. I kind of feel bad bringing Liara along for this, because, you know... Her mother's like right here, dead. Here's Liara. So the thing about this is the minute you finish up with this cutscene, when you start taking a step away from your current position, you should have a new cutscene play out. A, uh, a shepherd? Shepherd. Hey, shepherd. Home slice, six o'clock, baby. You guys also possess a sorry? This one serves as our voice. We cannot sing. Not in these low spaces. Your musics are colorless. Musics? What? Your way of communicating is strange, flat. It does not color the air. When we speak, one moves all. This is going to be a fun conversation. We are the mother. We sing for those left behind. The children you thought silenced. We are Rachni. How are you speaking through her? Our kind sing through touchings of thought. We pluck the strings, and the other understands. She is weak to urging. She has colors we have no names for. But she is ending. Her music is bittersweet. It is beautiful. The children we birthed were stolen from us before they could learn to sing. They are lost to silence. End their suffering. They cannot be saved. They will only cause harm as they are. I don't understand. Why are your children killing people? These needlemen. They stole our eggs from us. They sought to turn our children into beasts of war. Claws with no songs of their own. Our elders are comfortable with silence. Children know only fear if no one sings to them. Fear has shattered their minds. I understand. 
A child left alone in a closet until she is 16 would not be sane. If you're sure they can't be saved. It is lamentable, but necessary. Do what you must. Before you deal with our children, we stand before you. What will you sing? Will you release us? Are we to fade away once more? There are acid tanks rigged up on that thing. Set them off. Millions of my ancestors died to put these things down. Don't let them come back. They made a mistake. They let the Krogan go too far. This is a chance for us to atone. She has done nothing to us. Your companions hear the truth. You have the power to free us. Or return our people to the silence of memory. Okay, so we just got a mouthful of information at once. So two things off two things I just want to discuss. The first thing, the Queen revealed why the Rack Nine the facility were going awry and attacking people left and right. It's because they were insane as a result of uh, experimenters intervening and separating them from their mother. They basically grew up to be uh, mentally compromised. And that's the reason why that they're so unstable and they're so violent. Our second thing is that we're now being presented with a very major decision that will have ramifications for Mass Effect 3, and just a little bit of an encounter with Mass Effect 2. We can choose to save the Rachni, or we can condemn them to extinction. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of background before we make our decision. Are you a survivor from the war? A clone? We do not know. We were only an egg. Hearing mother cry in our dreams. A tone from space hushed one voice after another. It forced the singers to resonate with its own sour yellow note. Then we awoke in this place. The last echo of those who came out from the singing planet. The sky is silent. If I let you live, would you attack other races again? No. We, I, do not know what happened in the war. We only heard discordance, songs the color of oily shadows. We would seek a hidden place to teach our children harmony. If they understand, perhaps we would return. Now it is up to you to decide whether or not the Rachni Queen is being honest. I... Pretty much gave her a chance and let her um, let her escape and let her try and rebuild her race anew. And as you play through some of the side quests and as you later get into Mass Effect 3, or actually into Mass Effect 2, you'll get a little bit of understanding about what she means by um, songs the color of oily shadows. That actually refers a little bit to a certain race that we will be fighting later in the series. I won't destroy your entire race. You'll go free. Are you stupid? Your people didn't fight these bastards, so maybe you don't get it. Are we any better if we kill them all? Do what you want. My people will clean up this mess later, just like we did for the Solarians. You will give us the chance to compose anew? We will remember. We will sing of your forgiveness to our children. Great. Bugs are writing songs about you. Mark my words, you'll regret this. I beg to differ. But it's okay. So we have made our decision, and this decision is going to have ramifications for us. It's going to have some significant, uh, well, it's going to have some pretty striking, uh, oh my god, I can't even find words. I've got a lot going through my head right now, so I'm trying to process, but the decision that we made is going to have some consequences in Mass Effect 2 and in Mass Effect 3. So, hope you made your decision right. I saved the queen because I took what she said at face value and I thought that she was being honest. 
and I've got a little bit of knowledge about what happens in the future games, so... Yeah. Now, if you just come to the fight in the area, you may find crates scattered here and there. Feel free to shoot them up, or just use biotic powers if you have them to lift them out of the way. But we want to grab these cleaners, these uh, crates before we leave, and I'm going to go ahead and just reduce all these to Omni Gel. Because I do not have any room whatsoever left in my inventory. Alright. And I'm just going to take one look around the area, but I think I've gotten all the crates. But I don't want to i don't want to forget anything, because once we finish up here at peak 15, we will not be coming back. So, take the time to look around the area. Do not leave the room if you uh, forget anything. Because this is pretty much a, a one-way stop, if you get what I mean. Once you leave here, or ideally once you go down to the hot labs and finish off the job, you're pretty much locked into the end phase. You cannot do anything else. So right now we can no longer go back to uh, the barracks and the quarantine zone in the med bay. That is pretty much all locked off to us. The only thing left for us now is to try and finish up at the hot labs, but that is gonna have to wait till the next episode. So I just wanna say, we'll try to get to that episode whenever I get some chance to record. But for right now, this is Great Tree Jam, and I just want to wish you a happy day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you may be in this universe or the next. And I hope to see you in my next vid. But until then, bye.